Welcome to our brand new episode of the Metal Map Podcast. And uh, today is going to be a pretty cool one because today we are going to be going back to Disney. Yep, good old Disney. Um, as some of you may know, I did um, quite a lengthy Disney retrospective. I think it was like Disney Week back around July, August, so- somewhere around that time last year, where I took a look at. Um, all the animated Disney films, um, the ones that came out in theaters and whatnot, you know, so I will be going back to that today because I'm going to be taking a look at uh, the latest Disney uh, animated feature, and that is Big Hero 6, which came out back in November. So that's going to be a pretty cool one, so that should be awesome. First of all, let's go ahead to a couple of shout-outs. First of all, Chucky's Playground, great place to be. If you haven't signed up yet, definitely check it out. Great people. You know, we talk about all kinds of things, whether it's Chucky-related, non-Chucky-related. Um, just an amazing place to be. If you haven't signed up, definitely sign up because we would love to have you. Uh, just a great place all around. And Movie Mayhem with Spanky and G. You know, once again, great podcast. You know, run by two great people. Um, the chemistry between them is awesome as well. The movies they talk about are pretty cool as well. And it's just a very entertaining podcast. Uh, if you haven't heard it, definitely check it out. Very entertaining and highly recommended. So now we are going to talk about Big Hero 6. And I've got to be honest with you. This movie surprised me. It, it really did. Because I went into this, not, not, not necessarily with low expectations, but um, I wasn't really expecting anything great from this movie. Because I had seen um, the trailers and the TV spots that were coming out last year. And in all honesty... Honesty, it just it didn't really look that interesting to me. I don't know why. Um, for whatever reason, it just didn't seem that interesting or that intriguing to me, you know. But um, so I watched all the Disney animated films, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I watched all the Disney films. I might as well watch this one, you know, because I'm a big Disney fan. You know, anybody who knows me knows that I absolutely love Disney. So, you know, I'm going to see every Disney animated feature. Um, so, I watch it, and I, I was surprised at how much I liked it, because I was not expecting um, to actually like it as much as I did. So, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to talk about Big Hero 6. And before we do that... Since this movie um, just came out around November or so, it's still pretty recent. It's not even a year old yet. So, um, if you have not seen Big Hero 6 and do not want it spoiled for you, um, do not listen to the rest of this review because a major spoiler alert, okay? So, if you don't want to know what happens, don't listen to it. Go watch Big Hero 6 and then come back. I'll wait. Okay, is everyone back? Awesome. So now we can talk about Big Hero 6. And it revolves around a character named Hero who's 14 years old and he's like this robotic genius. And what I really liked about this film was was its setting. I thought the setting was really creative. I thought it was really unique. Um, It's sort of like this hybrid of San Francisco, California, California, and... Tokyo, Japan, and I thought that was really cool, the way that they did it. Um, it, Pretty much, whenever it's daytime, it looks like San Francisco, from what I've seen of it. And during the nighttime, it definitely looks like something from Tokyo, Japan, from what I've seen of Tokyo. Um, It just looks great, you know, animation-wise, awesome look, you know. Disney is pretty much the master of animation, and they probably always will be, you know. And uh, it's just, the way the film looks is just really great. 
And so he's being raised by his aunt, who's voiced by Maya Rudolph. And she doesn't really have a, a large role in this. Um, it's not necessarily like a cameo. Um, it's sort of like a minor role, kind of. Really, she and um, James Cromwell, who voices Professor Callahan, are really the only notable people in this one. I think there's some people you might recognize. I think the voice of Baymax is from 30 Rock. And uh, there's also some that you might recognize. But for the most part, um, I think those two, Maya Rudolph and James Cromwell, are really the only notable people in this movie. Uh, so, anyway, Hero's parents are dead. You know, in a Disney film, that's a big shock right there. Parents being dead. Like, Disney seems to always like to do films where at least one parent is gone. <laughs> I don't know why. But, um, so anyway, most of the time he spends, he does illegal robot fights, which we see at the beginning of the film. And I thought that would have been a, a cool little subplot that we could have explored, but that it really only happens in the beginning of it. So, uh, his older brother, t t Tadishi, I believe is how it said, it takes him to the robot center and he meets Tadishi's friends, Gogo, Wasabi, Honey Lemon, and Fred. And I really like these characters and I really wish we had gotten to know them uh, just a little bit more. Like they, they appear um, in the film, throughout the film. But I really wish we sort of got a few more minutes to really get to know these guys and girls uh, before we sort of like went into the actual plot. So I was sort of hoping for more character development for these characters. But um, these characters are really fun. I really like these characters. You know, very likable, you know, stuff like that. And there's also the healthcare companion robot called Baymax. And... This is probably, like, he's sort of like, I guess they wanted to be, there's, in Disney movies, there's always that one character that they sort of want to be, um, the popular character, you know, the breakout character, you know, like, in Aladdin, it was the genie, in Lion King, it was Timon and Pumbaa, um, you know, stuff like that. And so I think in Frozen Olaf, so I think this one is Baymax. Now he, he's pretty cool. I mean, he really is. The look of it is very cool. Um, so Hero signs up for the school science fair, and he presents these really cool things called microbots. And it's these swarms of tiny robots that can pretty much do anything. You know, they can form pretty much anything uh, that your mind could, you know, form, where it's like building a building or, you know, any kind of form, you know, and it's really cool. And Hero gets accepted into the university, and a businessman called Cray attempts to buy the microbots, but Professor Callahan is, like, very apprehensive about it, because he says that Cray cuts corners and stuff like that. You know, Cray seems to be presented as an unscrupulous businessman, and so Hero declines. Then, um, I believe just shortly after a fire breaks out in the university, that she tries to save him, but he ends up getting killed in the explosion. Tries to rescue Callahan and everything, but gets killed. And Hero, several weeks later, ends up activating Baymax. And they follow Hero's last microbot to an abandoned warehouse. And, it, and they, it disco it's discovered that Heroes microbots have been uh, mass produced and they get attacked by a mask man. And Hero equips Baymax with the armory, sort of like invents a battle chip. You no, know, because um, Baymax has a health chip inside him which provides him with health care and stuff like that. Um, but he also invents a battle chip which um, gives him all these sort of fighting abilities and fighting personality. And all that stuff. And so the sixth team, which is Hero, Baymax, and um, the teammates, they decide to form a superhero team, thus Big Hero 6. And they go to Fred's mansion, and Fred's kind of like a fanboy <laughs> kind of thing, you know. 
kind of guy. And so they go to plan, and they suspect that Cray is behind the whole thing. And they were researching teleportation technology, and they and the test pilot ended up disappearing. And uh, they end up battling the masked man, and it's revealed to be Professor Callahan. And this surprised me too, because I was really thinking that it was going to be Cray. I really was, but so that was a cool little twist that they did. And uh, he ended up starting the fire as a distraction, distraction to steal Hero's bots. And left Tadishi to die. And Hero removes Baymax's healthcare chip. And he leaves only the battle chip. And he wants him to kill Callahan. But um, the teammates are able to stop Baymax before he can. And you know, Baymax you know, stops Hero. Saying that it wasn't what Tadishi would have wanted. He wouldn't want vengeance or anything like that. And Baymax plays uh, several videos of Tadishi... You know, running a test for BMAX's development. And that's a really cool uh, little scene. And they reunite to stop Callahan. And it turns out that the test pilot was actually Callahan's daughter. And uh, Callahan wants revenge on Cray because Cray, he feels that Cray knew that uh, it wasn't ready yet. And he decided to do it anyway. So, and it's a great battle scene. It really is, you know. And they have to go inside, and they decide to go actually into the portal to try and save um, the test pilot, uh, Callahan's daughter. And the way the, the space looks inside the portal is really cool. It's, I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's almost like outer space, spacey kind of thing, but like pinkish, purplish cloud things, I guess. I really don't know how to describe it, but it looks amazing. You know, great animation on this. And unfortunately, um, the thrusters on his armor fail, and Baymax, unfortunately, has to stay behind uh, in the portal. But Hero and the test pilot end up getting rescued. And so everything pretty much goes back to normal. Uh, Hero is able to actually finds healthcare chip, Baymax's healthcare chip, and which was clenching his rocket fist, and the hero is able to rebuild him back to the way he was. So, and the six friends decide to continue their exploits throughout the city. And so, it sort of kind of leaves it open for a sequel, kind of, sort of. But, um, yeah. So, there's also a post credit sequence, and... You know, it seems like every movie now has a um, post credit sequence. You know, like every movie I watch, I always, you know, wait until after the credits to see if there's a post credit scene. Because pretty much every movie has that. So it turns out that Fred, um, Fred's dad is actually a retired superhero and he's voiced by Stan Lee. And uh, for those that don't know, Big Hero 6 is like a Marvel comic. This was based off a of Marvel comic. Uh, which I had no idea, so that's pr pretty cool to discover. And so, it's a pretty cool little Stan Lee cameo. And that's pretty much it for the movie. Um, overall, I think this is a pretty cool film. Like, like I said, you know, it really surprised me uh, how much I liked it. Because from the trailers and the TV spots, I didn't think it would really be that interesting. But it really did. And as far as a sequel would go, I think a sequel would be cool, but I actually think a TV show on, like, the Disney Channel or Disney XD or whatever would be cool as well, because, you know, I think it really leads, the premise of it, you know, like a superhero team, I think that has um, awesome possibilities, a lot of possibilities for, like, a TV show. And, you know, they turned a lot of Disney shows, Disney movies into shows. Um, they turned Hercules, Hercules into a TV show, I think. They did Emperor's New Groove into a TV show. Little Mermaid, Aladdin, they turned those into TV shows. So I think they could turn Big Hero 6 into some type of TV show. I think that would be pretty interesting. So overall, Big Hero 6, definitely very good. You know, very surprised me. I really liked it. 
Um, if you haven't seen it, I say check it out. I definitely recommend it. You know, especially if you're a big Disney fan, uh, you're gonna like this if you're a Disney fan. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.